Thank you, Jesus. Heavenly Father, we are, we are grateful for your love. We are grateful for your kindness. Grateful for your goodness. We are excited about what you've done for us in Christ. Thank you for the forgiveness of sins. Thank you for the gift of righteousness. Thank you for loving us the way the world can love us. Thank you for standing by us in all seasons of life. Thank you because Christ in us is the hope of glory. We give you praise and glory today. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Can we give the Lord a big shout of amen? God bless you. Can you please have your seat? Amen and amen. God bless you. Can you please have your seat? Look at someone they are sitting next to and say hello to them. You know, just welcome them and say hello to them. Welcome them to church. Find out hello. Hey, how are you doing? Glory to God. Glory to God. All right. So Luke chapter 11 verse 1. And the Bible says this. And it came to pass as he was praying in a certain place. And let me tell you something. That is a big, that statement alone is a big challenge to me. Because the Bible says, and it came to pass as Jesus was praying in a certain place. Because in my estimation, if there's someone that should not pray, it should be Jesus. Because what does he pray about? What does he pray for? Who does he pray to? But we realize something, and Jesus teaches us something powerful here. Number one, the, the life of Jesus was characterized by prayer. He says, and it came to pass as he was praying in a certain place. He was praying in a certain place. He said, he sees, he sees, and one of his disciples said to him, he says, Lord, teach us to pray. He says, as he was praying in a certain place, he sees and said, Lord, teach us to pray. Question, and this is, this, this, I'm, I'm going to start with this. You know, what would Jesus be praying about? And sometimes, I want to say this quickly here, and sometimes you will notice when very fervent Christians become richer, they become more financially empowered and more strong economically one of the things that they often lose is their prayer life have you noticed that sometimes it's not even the fact that they get richer sometimes they just migrate from a developing nation and migrate to a developed nation maybe they move to canada they move to europe and all of a sudden they just forget their prayer life and the reason why that happens is this the reason why that happens is this sometimes the church has emphasized a lot of teaching on breakthrough god will do this for you at the expense of spiritual growth polarizing the teaching of prayer to make it seems as if all prayer is about god to do something for you so when people become in a state where they don't have felt needs again they can pay their children's school fees they can pay their house rent they can pay everything for you so they wonder why am i praying as a matter of fact recently on social media I saw a guy saying that, you know, I used to pray very hard and things are not going well. You know, I moved to this country, I changed my method and now I don't pray a lot but I have everything I used to pray for. He said, prayer is just a waste of time. And when he said that, I laughed and I said, wow, this guy was taught badly. Why was he taught wrongly? Because in his mind, prayer is the prayer. The only reason we pray is to get things from God. The only reason we pray and if you're here and you have that notion and the only time you pray is that you want something from god your theology or your thinking about prayer is not complete just imagine you're in relationship with someone either your wife either your husband either your daughter whoever it is and every time they talk to you they want something from you how will you feel nobody wants a relationship where someone is a parasite everyone wants a relationship where there's what there's give and take it's symbiotic there's giving and giving. and this refers to this so question there's nothing jesus christ was acting the father jesus could not be asking for power he was power himself jesus could not be asking for money he had all resources but why would jesus christ spend so much time in prayer as a matter of fact why was his life characterized with prayer he wasn't asking for a wife he knew he was going to die he wasn't asking for a house he didn't need a house why was he spending so much in prayer that will lead us to one of the most important things that number one prayer can meet your need but the essence of prayer solely is not about meeting your need it's about fellowship with god so the bible says this and it came to pass and when he was praying in a certain place and when he had ceased very powerful his disciples said to him, and when they said to him, they said, Lord, 
Can you read the next line, please? Let's read that. I want to go. Lord, what? They say, Lord, teach us to pray. And that, that should be off balance. You know why? You know why? You know, they didn't say, Lord, teach us how to multiply bread. They didn't say, Lord, teach us how to multiply fish. They say, Lord, teach us to pray. That means they looked at the ministry of Jesus Christ's life and they said, if there's something we want to take, if there's something we want him to teach us, it's not how to cast out devils, it's not how to heal the sick, it's not how to teach the Bible, it's not how to multiply bread, what we, it's not how to walk on water. I mean, if I was there, I would have said, Lord, teach me how to walk on water. But the disciples that were close to him looked at everything. And the biggest thing they said was that, you know, I don't know how they processed it, but in their mind, I believe that the biggest thing they saw that was a secret of his public success was his prayer life. And they were like, Lord, teach us to pray. Almost meaning that if we can get what you get in prayer, we will do what you do in life. Life changing. Life changing. He said, teach us to pray. And remember what they did not say they didn't say teach us how to pray because if it says teach us how to pray it was I'll talk about the methods of prayer it said teach us to pray teach us to pray means teach us to prioritize prayer teach us how to pray means give us a step-by-step -step plan for prayer he said teach us to pray teach us to prioritize prayer glory to god and one of the questions i get asked often is this why do i need to pray when god knows what i want why can't he just do it for me? I want to ask you a question. If you park your car outside, just outside there, and you just see a guy washing it, will you just pass on and move on? What will you do? You will stop the guy and say, why are you washing this car? Yes or no? Prayer is that invitation for God to do something in your life. I know that God knows your need, but you're like that car that is parked outside. God cannot just be interrupting your life and saying that, hey, it's time for you to get my take horse, man. It's time for you to get, get, get a job. No, 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 no. So what God does is that, for you, for God to do something for you, you must invite him to come and do it. And prayer is that invitation. Prayer is inviting divinity into act on humanity's behalf. Praise God. I said praise God. I said praise God. So that's why when things happen, it's not as if God doesn't see it, but God is saying, who is going to invite me through prayers? It's simple things happen it's not as if god has got to say who is going to invite me to prayer who is going to lift up their voices and say something that's going to cause me to come into situation glory to god i said glory to god so why do we pray the first reason why we pray i've said it already prayer is a platform for fellowship and renewal and spiritual renewal prayer is a platform for fellowship and spiritual renewal look at let's look at first corinthians first corinthians first corinthians chapter 1 verse 9 prayer is a platform for fellowship so in prayer we get to fellowship with god so we don't pray because we need something we pray because we want to what fellowship with god praise god the deepest prayers is not when you're asking for something where you're just there and you're saying here am i to worship here am I to bow down? Here am I to say that you're mine? And all together, and all together, and all together. And, and someone is saying that, what's the prayer point? No prayer point. I'm just here. I'm here to say how much I love you. I'm here to say how much I love you. Lord, I'm not here to complain about many problems by your spirit. I'm here to say I love you. I'm here to say I adore you. That's what I'm here to say. Lord, I love you. I'm here to say I love you. That's what I'm here to say. 
I love to love you, Lord. I don't know if you heard the last part. Of the I, I love to love you, Lord. And it's a deep prayer. Look, you know what I'm saying? So I'm saying so because this phase of life, when you're looking for visa, you're trying to buy a house, you need a job. When this face is God, will he still be your lover? You know him as a giver, but know him as a lover. You know him as a giver. When you can be like, Lord, it's not about the things you do for me. It's not what you do for my kids or my grandchildren or for my husband or my wife. It's the fact that as a person, I love to love you. Do you know how, prayer, how powerful prayer can be if you can spend 30 minutes, one hour, and you look back and there's nothing you've asked them? Just worship, just fellowship, just praising Him. And that's a part of prayer that is missing in this part of the world because all of our prayers are either get into Lord, do this for me, do that for me, which is wonderful. And that's where you start from. The Bible says, everyone that asks it, receive it. Everyone that seek it, find it. And to him that knock it. Look, we start from asking. That's, you see, when a child is born, a child starts by asking, asking, asking. Then a child goes to, that. can I spend some time with you? Then a child begins to take care of you. Grow in your prayer life. Grow from asking to fellowship. Glory to God. I say glory to God. 1 Corinthians 1 verse 9. 1 Corinthians 1 verse 9. Hallelujah and you must practice it and let me say something to you you know sometimes when you come to church they sing the songs i know that you don't know all the songs but that's why we bought the expensive screen so that the wordings there can help you sing along don't just look at it sing along because worship is expressed by words see what the bible says in first Corinthians chapter 1 verse 9 it says and god is faithful whom by whom ye were called into what hey we were called into fellowship we're called into fellowship. We're called, if I say this service, we just want to fellowship with God. We just want to worship Him. That's enough. That's our calling. We're called to fellowship. It's our life assignment. We're called to fellowship. But something else, have, this is also why we pray. We're called to fellowship. There's something else why we pray. You know, in the place of prayer, prayer is a platform for fellowship and renewal. Psalm 84 verse 7. Psalm 84 verse 7. And I'm saying this because, you know, Psalm 84 verse 7. We're called to fellowship. And there's something about fellowship with God that it rubs off on us. I don't know if you know that. I want to say something to you. Listen to me. If your closest friends, you have six friends that are close to you, and the six of them are quite stupid, you didn't count well. There are seven of you there. The reason why is that it just takes a stupid person to have stupid friends. And if you are really wise, over time, their stupidity will rub off on you. The Bible says, "Iron sharpened iron, so the can't so a friend sharpened it. The countenance of a friend sharpened it." What am I saying? If you can stay with wise people, you become wise. What about when you hang out with the most wise God? You can hang out with God regularly, and it doesn't affect the way you think. Because how would you even understand the things He says with you? God is deep. God is wise. God is strong. If you spend time with that kind of person, it will rub off on you. So why else do we pray? Look at this. Psalm 84 verse 7. The Bible says, and they go from what? From strength to strength. Everyone that appears before the Lord in Zion. This, this is a season of the year where people are getting depressed. Where people are getting down. Where people are, you know, people are struggling. But the Bible says, this is what the Bible says. He said they go from strength to strength. It means that the person that prays renews his strength. I'm saying so because sometimes you get so cranky, you get so tired, you're depressed, you're depressed about work, you're depressed about this, you're depressed about that, your husband begins to annoy you, your wife begins to annoy you, the kids begin to get you angry. But the Bible says it's very powerful. He says that everyone that appears before the Lord, they go from what? From strength to strength. I'm going from strength to strength. From strength to what? To strength. From what? Strength to strength. Everyone that appears before the Lord, they go from strength to strength. So what, what does that mean? This is the season of the year. People begin to give up on their dreams. People begin to give up and be like, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know if this will happen again. And they just say, no, 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 no. No, no, no. Let's relax. What is happening that my energy is draining out? It's like your mobile phone. When your battery is low, it's difficult to get used. Some functions are limited. 
what do you do? Go back again and recharge the battery. So all of a sudden, there are no big dreams again. All of a sudden, there are no big visions again. All of a sudden, there are, there are no big, big things again. Go back to the place of your strength. Listen to me. Your strength is in God. Don't forget that. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. The second reason why we pray is that first Chronicles, first Chronicles chapter 12, first Chronicles chapter 12. The second reason why we pray is so that you can know the importance of prayer. Second Chronicles, first Chronicles chapter 12, please. First Chronicles chapter 12, verse 31. And this is important for all of you that you're running your business, you're making transitions. Read this very well, verse 31 to verse 32. The Bible says, And of the half tribe of Manasseh, 8,000 which were expressed by name to come and make David king. Verse 32. The Bible says this, and of the children of Issachar, there were what? Men that had understanding of the times. Watch this. This were not everybody. These men had understanding of the time. He now goes on to explain what it means. What does it mean? To know what Israel ought to do and the heads of them were 200 and all the brethren were at their command. These men were signal givers. They had understanding of the time. They knew when to enter the business and come out. When to enter that and come out. One of the things prayer does is to amplify your spiritual sensitivity. Praise God. One of the things prayer does is to prayer makes you spiritually sensitive. Prayer makes spiritual sensitivity. Listen to me. Man was designed to see and know more than the physical. Man was designed to see and no more than the physical. And I can tell you stories after stories after stories. The Bible says these men of Isiaka, they had a gift. They had understanding of the time. They knew when to move the business. They knew when to close down the business. They knew when to invest here and invest there. And this is the work of prayer. Prayer makes you spiritually sensitive. You just don't understand. You know, there was a story, there, there was a story that um, there's a story I want to share with you. This guy met this this girl met this guy and they were going to date and get married. But the more she prayed, the more she felt like a restriction, like don't do this, don't do this. So eventually she didn't. She got married to somebody else, and two or three years into her marriage, that guy died and all of those kind of things. And when the guy died, she felt so upset. And God said, The reason why they wanted to marry him is this. He had made choices that would cut short his life. And I knew. And I didn't want to be a widower. Widow, a widow. He said, but if I told you then, you will not understand. So I simply did not give you what a go ahead. There's something about spiritual sensitivity. I'm telling you. There's something about it. And when you pray, your spiritual senses just become sharper. Oh, wow. No. Oh. It's just, it's just become sharper. Let me give another example. Proverbs chapter 22 verse 3. Proverbs 22 verse 3. Look at this. This is very powerful. Proverbs chapter 22 verse 3. Glory to God. You can do better. Glory to God. See what the Bible says. One to go. Let's read together. A prudent man foreseeth evil and hideth himself, but the simple passed on and is punished. Sometimes you ask a question. How did that Christian die? The reason why is that he could not foresee. He said the prudent man foreseeth evil. He could see that danger is coming. Just a couple of months ago, you know, in my personal prayer time, God just began to lead me to pray against some negative things. I just began to pray. I just began to pray. I just began to... See, in the physical, there was nothing that showed something was going wrong. But my spirit had picked up things. My spirit had picked up things. Praise God. I mean, one of the words we received this year was that it will be economically challenging, just as it is right now. But that word came last year. How did you know? Spirit just because it says a prudent man foreseeth evil. While you're dating, you just have a nudge that, honey, let's prep my first pregnancy. Ah. Your boyfriend goes, ah, You haven't even pregnant yet. Are you paranoid? And some people are paranoid. That's what I'm talking about. But these people are not paranoia. It's the fact that their spirit has picked signals. They can tell that there's a pit ahead. See what the Bible says again. Is it a prudent man foreseeing evil? You know, just like in the word of Paul, Paul says, I perceive that the voyage will be dangerous. How did he know? He says, I can perceive. You can perceive that. Ah, this transaction, this transaction, this transaction. I mean, one guy was telling me about a project and I said, 
ha, this project they're about to do. It just, I wanted to know. He said, let's pray together. I said, this project will be full of trouble. I said, this will be full of trouble. And true, it was full of trouble. How do you know? Prayer makes you sensitive. Do you know something that happens when your battery is low on your phone? I hope you know that it's difficult to get network. And another thing is this, and this is very powerful about prayer. This is very powerful about prayer. You know, the, what prayer does is that prayer puts you in a place where you can get network easily. So there are certain places you go and you want to browse. You want to, then your, your WhatsApp is not working. Your social media is not working. And it's not as if they're not working. Only that where you are, what happened to it, there's no internet access in that area. What prayer does is to move you in your emotions to a place where you can access divine, where you can have divine download. Where you can have divine download. That's what fasting and prayer does. So as we begin to pray and fast and pray, this is what's going to happen. Praise God. Is this a prudent man for sin? You wonder, how did I make that loss? You wonder, what was the Holy Ghost saying? Was I so blind I could not see? One of our brothers was saying to me, he said, Pastor, thank you for teaching us well the word of God. I was about to enter a bus. He said, as I was about to enter, I felt the power of God pull me back. I told the bus, wait, let me get down. He said, enter, 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 enter. He said, I didn't enter. He said, I don't know what happened. But I'm sure that when I enter that bus, something happened to them eventually. How do you know such things? The Bible says, a prudent man foresees evil. It's the spirit that makes you see it. So I'll just come and sound to, I want to, I love you. You'll say, you? I've seen you. I'm you a time waster. You say, ah, you've not given me a chance. You have given me a chance in the spirit. You had a chance in the spirit. Glory to God when you understand this there are certain transactions you will not do don't you understand you, because you can tell you can tell that this is not my transaction you can tell that this transaction has encumbrances you can tell but prayer makes you and that's why if you notice when people pray they have a lot of visions you will hear at the time look at Jesus Christ as he was coming out of Jordan the Bible was praying and the heavens opened question when the Bible says the heavens opened did others see it nobody saw it now the people that I eye of the spirit that saw it because if the heavens opened, they'll have known that he had something. But prayer helps your spiritual senses come alive. You stop making terrible mistakes, you stop making terrible investments, and the reason why is that your senses have come alive. Someone say hallelujah. I say someone say hallelujah. Someone say hallelujah. I, I remember. You know, I mean, our church started from the mainland in Bagada specifically. And, um, you know, you know, um, I was living in Ogurujiare. And the house I was living in Ogurujiare was a free house. I could live there without paying rent. It was given, it was living this house as long as you wanted. But the Spirit of God spoke to me and said, get up and move to the island. I said, what? I have not paid rent. In fact, when I told the person that gave us the house to live in, I said, I said is that a wise decision? You are not paying rent in this big five-bedroom duplex in Ogodoji area, which is a very classic area. You want to move to Lake? He said, why not save the money and buy your land? I said, that was not what I heard. I said, the spirit says, move. The first thing that happened is that I moved. And the first, and listen, looking back, that looking back, I know I heard the Lord. Because, because the question is that there was nothing I'm just saying that sometimes when God speaks to you in the natural there's nothing to see there's nothing and someone said why are you moving someone said why are you moving the only reason why I moved was because I heard God it was not it was it, just that's why I moved later on I saw the reasons why but at that time just because I heard God but the question is that how do you know what next to do? Because the Spirit of God will show you if you are spiritually alert. First Corinthians chapter 2. Glory to God. I said, Glory to God. First Corinthians chapter 2, verse 8. First Corinthians chapter 2, verse 8. There's someone I met many years ago, and the Spirit of God said, Be close to him. And that person became very significant. I mean, I met this person when I was a teenager. And the Lord God said, be close to him. And that person, we lost touch, we reconnected again. And that person became very significant in my life. But I did not know as a teenager that that person would have that influence. 
read, let's read together the bible says i'll read to you it says which none of the prince which none of the prince of this world knew for if they had known it they would have not crucified the lord of glory verse 9 it says this and see what it says but as it is written eyes has not seen nor ears heard neither has he entered into the heart of man the things which the lord has what prepared for them that love them what has he done verse 10 verse 10 verse 10 verse 10 but god has revealed them this is why we pray because in the place of prayer the place of prayer is the place of revelation a man that does not pray will be as blind as a bat he will not be able to see into the realm of the spirit he will only know what the senses can tell him and the reason why is that his eyes have not been activated by prayer and that's why sometimes i love women because women know how to pick signals in the spirit what, what the bible says you don't know have to pick signals in the spirit you don't have to pick things in the spirit and the reason why they're like that is not because god speaks more to women no because women give their time to the spiritual things those things come easily to them someone say hallelujah someone say hallelujah i say someone say hallelujah the third thing that prayer does prayer brings dramatic changes oh, oh wow prayer brings what dramatic changes second kings chapter 19 verse 9 this is a long read i'm gonna i'm gonna jump on it second Kings chapter 19 verse 9 prayer changes things prayer changes results i've seen people that have blocked fallopian tube prayer opened the tube i've seen people that doctor said cancer patient prayer changed it i've seen autistic children change the power of god released to prayer i've seen the lady approval released to prayer so let's read this. Let, i'm going to read this quickly the bible says and this is the king of israel and when he heard of Trika, the king of utopia he behold is come out to fight against thee he sent messengers unto Hezekiah, saying, verse 10, it says, Toss shall ye say to Hezekiah, the king of Judah, let not God in whom you trust. Oh, wow. I, I, this guy is audacious. It says, Toss say it to Hezekiah, the king of Judah, saying, Let not the God in whom you trust deceive thee, saying, Jerusalem shall be delivered into the, shall not be delivered into the hand of the king of Assyria. Verse 11, it said, Behold, as thou heard what the king of Assyria have done to all lands, by destroying them utterly and shall thou be delivered verse 12 it says have the gods of the nations deliver them which my father have destroyed and if you got to mention in their gods it said gozan haran reftin and children of eden which are in Teslas. verse 13 it says where is the king of hanat where is the king of aspa where is the king of the city of zafarin and of hannah of and iva continue and the king ezekiah received letter of the messengers and read it Oh my god the bible says as soon as he read it he went to blog he went on Insta blog yes or no he went to tweet you tweet too early you blog too early you post too much there are some things you hear you will just carry the paper just carry the email i'm going to the house of my god the god of abraham the god of isaac the god of jacob hey it's not even time to tell somebody you are talking too much praise god the bible says as soon as Ezekiah heard it he went up into the house of god and spread it before god like we do in next level look at look at the next verse and Ezekiah prayed before the lord and said oh lord god of israel which dwelleth between the cherubim thou art god even thou alone of all the kingdoms of the earth for thou hast made the heavens and the earth verse 16 lord thou down thy ear and hear open thou thy eyes and see hear the words of Zechariah, which he has sent to report the living god verse 17 verse 17 of a truth it, oh yeah God, ah. the, oh are you are you here he said of a truth he, what the doctor said is true what the lawyer said is true the dollar is high is true of a truth the of a truth oh lord the king of assyria have destroyed the nations and their lands he said this and have cast their gods into fire it's true for they are no gods by the way they are the works of men's hands wood and stones therefore they have been destroyed verse 19 now therefore oh god i beseech you save thou us out of his hands that all the kingdoms of the earth may know that thou art the lord even thou alone only glory to god i said glory to god I said glory to God. 
they got sleep verse 32 let's watch what your god did verse 32 therefore so said the lord unto the king of assyria he shall not come into this city nor shoot a bow there <laughs> god says he said will attack he will not even come near he said shall not come into the city or shoot a bow there nor come before it will shield nor cast a bank against it verse 3 by the same way he came aha I said the same way he came. They, they say, eh, Madam, you have five blood. The same way the five blood came, the same way shall return. Are, are you hearing me? Uh, they, they said there, there's something your child is showing signs of Down syndrome. The same way it came, the same way he shall return. They say you have denial. The same way it came, the same way he shall return. Can you believe and say amen? Uh, someone say well i've cancelled i've cancelled all of those things the same way it came the same way it shall return he said but the same way it came the same way shall return and shall not come into the city see the lord verse 34 read want to go for i will defend the city to save it for my own sake and for my servants david verse 35 oh glory to god and it came to pass that that night that god stood up no that god stood up it was too small for God to respond. That God sent legions of angels. Yes or no? If, even not legion. God sent just one angel. That promotion is just one angel. That person you're talking is just one angel. Just ah yeah 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 yeah. Hey, God, Allah, but you are the one that says ah sa 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 sa. This company is a big company. It's just one angel. He said he sent one angel of the Lord to go out and he smote the camp of the series in a hundred and four scores and five thousand, a hundred and five thousand. And they arose in the morning. They all all dead cops. Verse thirty six. Verse thirty six. And so, Senator Reed, King of Assyria departed and returned and dwelt at the navy. The same way he came. The same way. Not only you are come, the same way you came, the same way return. What, what am I telling you? Prayer, prayer bring dramatic results. The king said we could we can't save ourselves. Maybe you are here. You say I don't have no connections. Who can help me? Oh if you can pray you will get help. If you can pray, you will get help. If you can pray, you will get help. You're saying that I've been trying to get the approval of the company and this and this and this and CBN says this and FBN says this and this says this and PDP says it. Hey, if you can pray, you can get some answers. They say, well, the governor says I will not sign. Our, gov the, our God is bigger than the governor. Our God is bigger than the president. Our God is bigger than any approving authority. He's the king of kings and the lord of lords. Somebody say amen. The problem is that you keep talking. You today you've seen minister. Tomorrow you've seen first lady. Next tomorrow you've seen MD. You have not seen Jehovah. Praise God. All this time you are traveling to Abuja, going to New York, going here. Pack your load with God. Hey <laughs> Kabaya. When your wife said what's happening, said, I just want to check into an hotel for three days. What am I doing there? Only you can come with me if you can fast. And three days. Hey, what are we doing? We are invoking the hand of God. With all the noise the king of Assyria made, only one angel wiped him out. Not even two. And yet, God has legions. Million. The Bible calls that is the God of the angel army. He has an army full of angels that are waiting for deployment for you if you can pray. The question is, can you pray? I know you can use lipstick, but can you pray? I know, I know you can tweet, but can you pray? He didn't say, he didn't say, and the king tweeted. He said, and he prayed. I know that, I know you can do Insta life, but can you pray? No, this result is for those that can pray, not for those that can chat, not for those that can do WhatsApp. No, no, he's can you pray? Hey, not for those that can post and say, No, can you pray? It's not for people that can post. Can you pray? He said, If God wants to let him help me, it doesn't work like that. Too. You will pray. He said, Everyone help those that help themselves. Who wrote that in the Bible? You will pray. Somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. 
So what do you see? Number one, prayer is for fellowship. Number two, for renewal. Number three, he makes the spiritual sensitive. Number three, produce thoughts. Number four, produces radical results. How do we pray? I just want to share with you just one insight to pray. Are you ready? Hallelujah. Just one insight to pray. Act chapter 4. How, how did they pray in the Bible? How did they pray in the Bible? I know we pray in those, but how did they pray in the Bible? Let's learn something. You know, we keep learning on how to pray effectively. Act chapter 4. Oh, somebody say hallelujah. Say, I love the word of God. Ooh. Verse 23. Act chapter 4, verse 23. Because we're going to pray just now. Act 4, 23. The Bible says this was when they were harassed. The apostles were harassed. Peter and John were harassed. And being let go, they went to their own company and reported all the chief priests. Oh my. He said they went to their own company. Brother Charles, you need your own company. You need people that when something happens to you, you will just call them. Vanessa, come. Dick Derry, come. John, come. You hold their hands. You say, let us pray. Let us pray. As you hold their hands, you begin to spark fire. Praise God. You need, you need praying girls. You need, no, no. You don't need Instagram bodies. You need praying girls. Praise God. You need praying girls. People that, if they lift up their hands, fire will fall. Fire will fall from heaven. If they lift up their hands, they say the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, the covenant giving God. They will forget lipstick and call shoe. He said tongues of fire will be coming out. You do that, you do that when you're in the office. But do you prayer? You remove shoe. <laughs> you remove wig. What is wig when it comes to prayer? Praise God. He says, he says this, and being let go, they call their own company, you know, their own people. And they reported, or oh, they reported here. They, you report the doctor. You report the medical situation. You report it. They reported all the chief priests and elders had said to them. Verse 24. And when they heard it, they lifted their voice with one accord, with one accord, and said, Lord, thou art God. Notice how they prayed. Lord, thou art God, which hath made the heavens and the earth, and all that is in them. Verse 25. Who by the mount of thy servant David said, Why did the hidden rage? And the people what imagine a vain thing. Verse 26. Verse 26. And the kings of the earth stood up, and rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against the Christ. This is the first prayer that is recorded after the day of Pentecost. How did they pray? They prayed by quoting scriptures. This scripture they quoted, let me show you, Psalm 2 verse 1. I want to show you, because some of you are not aware that when they said David said, they actually went to the Old Testament and quoted scripture. You know, and that's why you, I love next level prayer. You are thought out to pray quoting scriptures. How do you make a prayer powerful? Quote scriptures. Don't just say, Father, you see me, you see me, you know everything. Lord, I'm just praying, praying. No! Pray the Bible way. Quote scriptures. See, Psalm 2 verse 1. Let's, one, one, let, let's go. Why did the aging rain? And the people imagine a vain thing. Verse 2. And the kings of the earth said themselves, Do you see word for word? Word for word. Peter was saying those things word for word. How do you pray? You pray with scriptures. Don't just say, Lord, I need a job. Lord, just help me. No, sir. Pray with scriptures. That's how the prayer works. You pray with scriptures. How do you pray with scriptures? Let me show you two things. Sam, let me just teach you how to do that now. I will pray. Psalm 138, verse 8. Glory to God. Glory to God. Psalm 138 verse 8. You'll pray with scriptures. Are you ready? The Bible says the Lord will perfect that which what? How do I pray? Father, I thank you because you are perfecting that concerns me. Oh Lord, thank you Jesus. This year there is no carry over. You are perfecting that that concerns me. Oh glory to God. Oh Lord, the same way you did my job, you are doing my marriage. The same way you are doing my job, you are perfecting that which concerns me. Oh, that, that, that my business with that my business with Nigerian Port Authority, you are perfecting it. That my deal with, uh, with NNPC, you are perfecting it. That my application with the embassy, you are perfecting it. The Lord is perfect. Perfecting, not halfway. You are perfecting that with concern. That's how you pray with scriptures. That's how you pray with scriptures. Father, you are perfecting that which concerns me. Perfecting means you are finishing it. So this year there's no carryover. This year there's no carryover. There's no carryover. My approvals coming complete because the Lord is perfecting that which concerns me. Oh, you've done the job, you've done everything, but the marriage also you're finishing it because you're perfecting that which concerns me. Oh, glory to God. There's nothing missing. You're perfecting. Oh, kaya to bakaya. Liko robo shalamata. Somebody say amen. 
Let me show you one more scripture. Maybe you will pray. Psalm 71 verse 7. Ooh. Oh my God. All of you that joined NLP this last week, you will have gotten this verse. Oh wow. Are you ready to read? One to go. I am a wonder to many. How do you pray? Father, you have made me wonder. I, I am a people look at me and wonder. I'm a financial wonder. In my career, I'm a wonder. In my business, I'm a wonder. Amongst my friends, you have made me a wonder. People look at me, they are amazed, they are surprised, they are perplexed. Oh, glory to God. Because the Lord has made me a wonder. You are my strong refuge. You made me a wonder. Kings are coming to the brightness of my shining. Kings are coming to the brightness of my shining. You made my business a wonder. Oh, glory to God. Oh, glory to God. My fashion business is a wonder. My power business is a wonder. You made me a wonder. In the name of Jesus. Praise God. Oh, are you getting it? This is how you pray. These are the apostles who pray. They will read the scriptures and pray with the scriptures. G -g give me the, give me maybe the passion translation or the NLT. Oh, look at the NLT. Woo. Are you here? Are you here? See, let me tell you something. When you start praying like this, the, before you, even the, the your, your, oh my God, your, your, your faith will be stirred. He said, my life is an example to many. He said, Father, you have made my life an example. You have made my children examples. You have made my marriage an example. You have made my career an example. In my office, in my office, AFC, where I am, I am an example. Glory to God. Example of your grace. Example of your favor. In Nigeria, I'm an example. Glory to God. As you are praying, the anointing will take over you. I'm an example to many. Praise God. In my family, I'm an example to many. I'm a good example of your favor of your grace and of you. he said the lord has made me an example why because you have been my strength and my protection lord i'm not tired i'm strong you are my strength i'm not afraid you're my protection oh yes they say this field is for men it doesn't matter what they say it's for he said you are my strength and my shield stand on your feet let's pray oh glory to god you have three minutes to pray you have three minutes to pray you have three minutes to pray go ahead and pray go ahead and pray Go ahead and pray. Every scripture you know declares. Every scripture you know declares. Pray with the word of God. 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 Go ahead and declare it. Go ahead and declare it. Pray with hallelujah. If you are in trouble, you will say, Many are the affliction of the righteous, for the Lord delivered them from every one of them. I'm coming out of every hardship. Oh, go ahead and declare it. Go ahead and declare it. Go ahead and declare it. If you have a project, you will declare. Except the Lord build the house, those that build, build in vain. The Lord is building my project. He's building my work. He's building with me. I have divine partnerships. Go ahead and declare it. Go ahead and declare it. The lines are falling onto me. Pleasant places, praise God. Oh, Rabbi Shada Bahaya. Oh, thank you, Jesus. You made me wonder. You made me wonder. You made me wonder. Kings shall come to the brightness of my lightning. In the name of the Lord Jesus, you are here. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. You have made me a wonder. Harvest us is full of wonders. In this year, feels the wonder of God. You have become a wonder. You have become an example of grace and favor, an example of goodness and mercy. In the name of Jesus. The Lord has made me a wonder. I have become an example of God's favor, God's blessings, God's grace. In the name of Jesus, glory to God. In Jesus' name we pray. Praise God. Ooh. Praise God. Learn to what? Pray with scriptures. Before you pray, what, what scripture covers this? You know, when you pray with scriptures, what happens to you is that your conviction grows stronger. The reason why is that the Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing the word. And now that you are praying by the word, so your conviction grows what? Stronger. Say, the Lord has made me a wonder. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.
say the Lord has made me an example of his grace and of his favor in the name of Jesus amen are you blessed this morning oh Lord we thank you you have made us wonders and examples of your grace or favor we receive every blessing today we receive strength towards this fast and praying season we will never be the same in Jesus mighty name say the Lord has made me a wonder the Lord has made me a wonder tell them look at me look at me look at me again I'm a wonder Praise God. God bless you can have your sins.